Okay, and we're recording again. So, welcome back. If you uh, if you did not catch the the lecture from last time, we we spent quite a lot of time on the first section, two point eight, and some problems there, and some questions that students had, uh, and so we didn't have much time to go through problems from section three point two, which is on polynomial functions and their graphs, which I would claim is the harder of the sections to understand and to do. Uh, so I said that I'd give a couple more problems. I'd do a few more examples. Uh, and so that's what this video is all about. We're just going to do a couple more examples of taking some random polynomial graph or function, and we're just going to graph it. We're going to use the, the information of multiplicities of zeros uh, to help us graph it. So let's jump in. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, and for those of you that are still here, uh, thank you for sticking around. You can feel free to leave at any time, but I'm just going to grab a couple questions from the book. And uh, I might even ask you some questions along the way, if you don't mind. So looking at this one here, I see question 25 is not a bad one. Um, it gives us this polynomial, x plus 2 times x plus 1 squared times 2x minus 3. That's to the first. OK, so for those of you that are still here, still sticking around, the first thing we need to answer is, what are the zeros? And in order to find these, we just take each factor and we set it equal to 0 and solve. So we're going to take x plus 2 equal to 0, solve it. x plus 1 equal to 0, and solve it. 2x minus 3 set it equal to zero and solve. So the first two are obvious. Negative two, negative one. The last one, not as obvious, but it's still not too bad. We get three over two. Okay, y'all can check my math. I, th I think that those are the zeros. So the next question is, what are their multiplicities? So I'm going to just put those right next to them. So negative 2, I go up here and I look at this factorization of our polynomial. That factor has degree 1, so it has a multiplicity 1. Okay, we're just reading it right off the polynomial. x plus 1, that's the factor co uh, uh, corresponding to the 0 of negative 1. Well, it's raised to the power of 2, so its multiplicity is 2. The factor corresponding to the last 0 of 3 halves is the factor 2x minus 3. It has power 1, so it has multiplicity 1. So now we can go ahead and we can graph just like we did before. Okay, so I'm going to plot our, our zeros. We've got negative 1, negative 2. That's negative 1, that's negative 2, and then 3 halves. So let's say this is like 1, so this is 2. So 3 halves is like right here. I'll try and make this look like tick marks on the axis. All right, there we go. So there's our three zeros. Uh, and, and let me give you sort of an advanced tip, too. So the three of you that are here, here's a pro tip. And also in this section, we, we, talked about, uh, <clears throat> we talked about end behavior of polynomials and how that's dependent on the degree of your polynomial as well as the leading coefficient. So what is the, what is the overall degree of this polynomial?
the fourth. To the fourth, yeah. Very good. And is is the leading coefficient positive or negative? Positive. Yes. So just looking at this, we know that this thing is going to kind of look like x to the fourth, which means with the positive coefficient, it's going to look something like this. OK, so let's tuck that back in our brains. We know that it kind of has to look like this. This, this is going to help us determine. Remember I said before there are going to be some options you know whether our graph comes up from below and down or comes from like this and then goes through those options we're going to identify right away which one it is okay just based on this x to the fourth thing so let's do it we'll start at negative two it has a multiplicity of of one so it our graph passes right through that zero and our graph needs to eventually come up here because it looks like x to the fourth. So that means our graph comes down from above, crosses through negative two. Like, like it has to. <laughs> okay, what about at negative one? Well, that has even multiplicity. So this means that our graph comes down, comes up, touches, and bounces back down. Okay, what about at uh, at three halves. Well, we're already below the axis, so we're going to come from down, and we're going to go up through. Right there, and it has to connect in between. I'm going to quickly determine what that, how that does that, and I'm another pro tip just to make your graph a little more accurate, is you can quickly determine the y-intercept. And it's the product of all of these things. So 2 times 1 squared times negative 3 is negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This thing drops way down and then comes up. That's it. That's that's the entire graph. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm going to graph it now in Desmos and just see how close we were. So x plus two, x plus one, and is it two x minus three? Oh man, it's even worse than I thought. Let's see. Is it Windows? I'm going to try and paste it in here. It's not going to work, so I'm just going to share the Desmos calculator again. Okay. You see that? Look at how close we were. Through negative two, goes right through, comes from above and goes down. Comes back up to the zero of negative one, bounces back down. Has a y-intercept of negative six, but it keeps going down. <laughs> and then it comes up really fast at our zero of one and a half and keeps going. So our graph was really close. Just really close. We, we had no idea what kept what happened, you know, down here. But it turns out that it does something more like more like that. All right, it goes up really steeply here. Like that. really hard with a mouse to graph these things. Okay, does that make sense? 
Yes. Good. Okay, I'll go ahead and do another one. I'm wondering if they give really challenging ones. Looks like no. We'll do this one. So this is question question 49. And it actually gives us this, x to the 11th minus 9x to the 9th. And it, the, the question is to graph this and compare it to another graph, but we're just going to go ahead and graph this one. The other graph is not too, uh, too difficult to, to do. So how do you graph something like this if it's not factored yet? Well, if you remember way back, what I suggested is you just start making a table of values. <laughs> And that's the best way to graph something. You, you, the more points you plug in and determine the outputs for, the, the more accurate your graph will be. But for this, I think it's more important to try and factor things. So I see that both of these have a factor of x to the ninth. Right? We could rewrite x to the 11th as x squared times x to the ninth. So we could factor out an x to the ninth. And what we're left it with is x squared minus 9. And that x squared minus 9, that's a difference of, of squares. So we know how to factor that. x to the ninth times x minus 3 times x plus 3. That's fully factored. And that means we can find the zeros, find their mul multiplicities, and graph this guy just, just as easily as we did the last one. Um, so this is, a, this is a good first step. If you see a polynomial, if you see that you can graph that polynomial, or sorry, if you see then that you can factor that polynomial, do it. And then graphing it is super easy. Because otherwise, you're just going to be plugging in a ton of numbers <laughs> and trying to figure out the outputs. So here we go. We've got three zeros. We've got the zero of zero. So I'm going to make a table here. It has a multiplicity of 9. We've got a 0 here of 3 with multiplicity 1. Right, It's raised to the first power. There's only one of those factors. And then we've got a 0 of negative 3, again, with multiplicity 1. We've got everything we need. So here we go. Got zero, one, two, three, negative one, two, three. There's our zeros. And then let me ask you that pro tip again. This is really close to what? What is the degree of this polynomial? Well, we can actually read it from the beginning. The degree is the highest degree term. The degree is the same degree as the highest degree term. So this is x to the 11th. It's close to that. 
x to the 11th and a positive coefficient in front. So if we know our basic odd and even polynomials, this is going to look a lot like x to the 11th, which looks a lot like you know, something that basically comes up from below, crosses at 0, and then comes over here like this. This is x to the 11th. But our graph isn't this one because it has these three zeros, which means that it, it has some wiggles in the middle that x to the 11th doesn't have. Okay, so I'll leave this on the graph while I graph what we have. So at negative three, we have multiplicity one, which means our graph goes through the x-axis there. But just like x to the 11th, it has to start down in the bottom left. So it's gonna come up and go through like this. At zero, it's gonna go back through again because of that odd multiplicity of nine. So our graph goes up, comes back down, and goes through the zero there. And at three again, odd multiplicity, our graph's gonna go through that x-axis. So it's gonna come down and then go through like this. That's it. So at this point, we use the fact, you know, of the, we use the facts of the zeros, the multiplicities of the zeros, and sort of this general idea that this thing looks like x to the eleventh to make a guess at what our graph looks like. So I'm going to erase this. That's what we are guessing. And now I'm going to share the screen for the graphing, and we'll just do that. We have x to the eleventh minus 9x to the ninth, I think it was. And oh boy. I guess we were close, but it's a really steep graph, which, which we didn't get. And that's okay. So let's just put this from negative 4 to 4, and let's put the y-axis from negative 70. It's not enough. 100. Hold on. Let me see how low it goes. Negative, <laughs> let's go to negative 3250. Oh, that's that's 10 thousands, I see. Let's go with negative 12, 13, 14. Negative 13,500 to positive 13,500. Why isn't it liking that? So there we go. If I adjust the shape of our window, we were not too far off. We didn't exactly know how flat it was around zero, um, we, but we knew the general shape of it. Okay, so this this method isn't perfect. Um, it doesn't give you that, that perfect drawing of the, of the graph. But close to the zeros, we've got an accurate idea of what's going on. And, you know, if that's all you need, then that's all you need. If you want something better, go ahead and graph it on a utility. But this gives you some idea of how those characteristics of that, of that factored polynomial um, gives you an idea of how those characteristics play out in the overall um, in the overall graph of things. So that's a couple more problems. Um, thank you for sticking around you three. Do you do you want to see another one? Do you want to see more?
Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, once you get the hang of these, they just sort of, it's just a mechanical process that you just go through, so. Okay. Thank you. Well, Thank you. you have a great day. I'll talk to you next time, okay? You too. Okay, bye-bye.